I've, I've often kind of failed in the past and, and made a kind of joke out of that, almost made a career out of being a professional failure. I got fired from Vanity Fair, you know, I wrote a play which was a colossal flop and so on and so forth. And, you know, up until now, that, that I've always managed to kind of make that work for me because it's really only my career that's at stake, so who really cares? Journalist Toby Young's latest project is to set up his own state-funded secondary school in West London. I think my, my, my worry about the local comprehensive and about many state schools is that they're not just taught the three R's, they're not just taught history and geography and science. Um, they're also taught about internationalism and globalism and environmentalism and egalitarianism. You know, too many isn't. Already there's fierce opposition to Toby's school project. I tell you what, Toby, it's not just a question about education, it is a class issue. We've had, we've had 45 years of comprehensivisation. The British English class system is stronger than ever. It hasn't worked. It's going to be tough. Has the man famous for his book, How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, got what it takes? I'm engaged in a project that I passionately don't want to fail. I mean, there's, there's a huge amount at stake. I mean, if, if I fail, if I can't do this, um, if this group can't do this, um, given the advantages we enjoy, I think other people thinking about doing this will conclude, well, it just can't be done. Um, so I really want to succeed more than anything else I've ever tried before, I think. Toby may have a reputation for alienating people, but he's managed to persuade a group of local residents to join his scheme. Among them, Cosmo Lush, a digital media executive, Stefan Boyanovsky, an economist, Charlie Van Nathan, a teacher, and Susie Hobart, a business consultant. One of my great reasons behind this is that I see all, most people that I know going into the private sector, um, into, you know, going to church every week and desperately trying to get in, or, or moving out of London. Um, and that seems a great shame. It's now February 2010. The Labour government is in power and the economy is in free fall. The group wants the school, provisionally called the West London Free School, to be open by September 2011. This means getting rubber stamped in September this year. It's ambitious, very ambitious. They'll need a building, a funding agreement, a management plan, a viable curriculum, an admissions policy, and most important of all, a clear vision. So it's back to school for Toby and his team. They've invited some educational consultants to help them identify the school's core values. To provide the opportunity for a top quality education and ultimately a life of fulfilment to all young people. A classical liberal education that's available to all, regardless of wealth or ability. And to increase social mobility. A school where pupils are allowed, encouraged, trained to think for themselves, not merely trained to jump exam hurdles. It encourages high achievement in different areas, <coughs> constructive competitiveness. One of the first free schools in the country has opened in the capital this morning. The West London Free School in Hammersmith was set up by parents and teachers. Today is the first day of term and Carl Mercer has been speaking to staff and pupils there. When you're this age, new school is daunting enough. Day one of big school can mean lots of new challenges. But for these pupils at the new West London Free School, there's an extra focus on them. The school is one of 24 free schools opening this week across the country, at the heart of the government's controversial plans for the future of education. 120 youngsters started here this week, more than 500 applied. Despite critics claiming these schools, which are outside of local authority control and can set much of their curriculum, could damage traditional state schools. This school was the brainchild of writer Toby Young and backed with government money. Turned away from one West London council, he was eventually found this site in Hammersmith. If you look at the Labour opposition to free schools, it was quite vociferous at the beginning of the process, about a year ago, but it's now more or less stopped and the mood music coming out of the Labour Party has changed completely. 
The controversy around free schools will continue, but local authorities know that they are the only game in town. The Prime Minister saying today he wants to see hundreds more in the coming years. Carl Mercer, BBC London News. I started at the West London Free School in 2011 and I'm now at Jesus College Oxford reading classics. I think looking back on it now, the best part about the school for me was the musical education that we had. I was a choral scholar for most of my time here and I really vividly remember Mr Watkins playing us Allegri's Miserere and every hair on my body stood up. And I just remember it being the first time that I could recognise the beauty in music. I'm studying at Sciences Po Paris in France. I came to the West London Free School in Year 7, as part of the second year of the school. Upon reflection, the school provided me with an open mindset and the curiosity to pursue my academic and professional ambitions, which I will forever be grateful for. I'm reading politics at the University of Bristol. Studying history and politics at the sixth form prepared me really well for higher education. I am so thankful to the teachers for their dedication to every single student. I am studying genetics at the University of Glasgow. The West London Free School introduced me to music and other co-curricular activities that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to experience elsewhere. I feel so privileged to have been part of the school's first cohort and to have experienced a broad and balanced education. I'm currently studying economics at UCL and when I joined the West London Free School in 2015, I was not only new to the school, but I was new to London too but everyone was so welcoming and I quickly found my feet here. When I look back at my time at the school, I'm so grateful for the education I received and the friendships I made. I have just finished a BA in advertising. As a music scholar, I was thoroughly inspired by the music department. I have a lot to thank the West London Free School for. We've built a great team of teachers. They're expert in their subjects, they hold the room well, they love to teach. And we have so many fantastic departments. It is impossible to attend one of our pupils' concerts or end of year art shows and not be blown away by the incredible level of attainment and accomplishment. The team has been resilient and flexible. And when something hasn't worked, we have consulted, taken advice and made the right changes. We are in such a better place now. And as a result, our secondary is one of the most popular, oversubscribed, non-selective state schools in England. Our initial GCSE and A-level results were strong and have improved rapidly. We now get outstanding GCSEs and our percentage of the top A-star to A-grades at A-level are significantly above national average. Every year we get the vast majority of our sixth formers into the top universities in the country, as well as some of the best institutions to study music and art. Thank you so much for everyone who makes a difference to the school. From the staff, the parents, the PTA, the governors, and last but not least, to the unsung heroes who do so much to make things happen. Thank you. Perhaps the most distinctive thing about the West London Free School is our curriculum. We have an academic curriculum for all, designed to give pupils a core knowledge of the world they inhabit, and an introduction to the best that has been thought and said. Ten years on from our founding, I'm delighted to say that the curriculum vision is flourishing. What is more, we've played a significant role in national debates. Textbooks and resources first developed at this school are being used in classrooms across the country. And our teachers are advising the government on model curriculum for national use. Most importantly, our emphasis on the teacher as the subject expert and the curriculum at the centre of school life attracts phenomenal teachers with a passion for the subjects they love. In addition to offering a robust and engaging curriculum, we offer a calm and caring community with a strong emphasis on individual and collective responsibility. And a big thank you to the staff for their compassion and dedication in delivering this. What have we learned? Well, we've learned that good behaviour is vital, 
but so is a sense of belonging. We all know how important it is to feel valued, so that is a cornerstone of what we are building at the West London Free School. We have good reason to be proud of the work we've done so far, but we're also hungry for improvements and excited about making them. We hold the bar high for all our pupils. We're ambitious for them because we know what it takes to build long-term happiness in life. It takes kindness, hard work and high standards. On arriving as a founding member of staff 10 years ago, I wanted the West London Free School's musical life to be known for excellence, community and joy. Music has been at the heart of our journey as a school over the last 10 years, and I've loved every minute so much. <laughs> 10 years later, it lifts my spirits to think that I still have another 30 years teaching our brilliant pupils before I finally get wheeled out in 2041. Creativity is central to the art curriculum at the West London Free School. The Art and History of Art department have always tried to encourage students to think independently and intuitively. The mural, which celebrates 10 years of creativity at the West London Free School and made by the art department, has been inspired by artist Frank Stella. I particularly like the marrying of maths with the visual elements. The shapes and letters are all designed in a different style. We hope it reflects not only the exciting diversity of pupils and staff at the West London Free School, but also the different approaches to the curriculum that each subject has. The co-curricular programme, supported by the Foundation Trust, where pupils can choose to do as many clubs as they like, has been a great success. It's mostly funded by voluntary contributions from parents, and it provides pupils with opportunities they wouldn't otherwise have. I love the co-curricular programme. I've done four clubs this year, including my favourite, netball. I really love the music here. I'm in choir and I play drums. I really love participating in sport, especially football. The highlight of the school for me is musical performances such as cabaret and I'm really looking forward to the choir trip in year 10. The highlight of school for me is the real sense of community. The highlight of school for me is friendships and working hard to achieve goals. Happy 10th birthday to the West London Free School. Happy 10th birthday to the West London Free School. Happy 10th birthday to the West London Free School. Happy 10th birthday to the West London Free School. Happy 10th birthday to the West London Free School.